Hi, this is Ashwin. I wanted to show off the movement portion of the tactical battle system I was writing. So, I'm um, currently on this map. I have all of my units set to a movement range of 10, which means that they shouldn't be able to move more than 10 tiles. I believe I'm enforcing this now. Right before this, I was trying to make another version of this video, and I found an, I found a, a bug where I was not enforcing that properly. So let's see. I, it should be enforced properly now, and I think it is. Okay. So none of my events should be able to move along paths that have a, that would, you know, take them more than 10 minutes to move along. As you can see there, I've implemented jumps in this. So, wow, really, that takes them more than 10 to get there. 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, it does. Wow. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's calculating the shortest path correctly, I believe. Um, the implementation is using Dijkstra's algorithm, so it's very fast. As you can see, it looks really smooth right now. Um, it took me quite a while to get it to look this good and everything. Um, it, you know, I, I put about 80 hours into the script. I wrote, re, I've rewritten it several times. I probably um, the actual graph generation and algorithm portion actually isn't that long, but um, you know, it's probably it's probably three to four hundred lines of code. But um, you know, just rewriting it four times took forever. Rewriting it four times, finding all the bugs blah 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 etc it just took so long um so as you can see actually i uh i have the script implemented so that you can move units around at this you can use move you can click on other units and move them while other units are while units are currently moving on the map and you can do this with any with any amount of units it's easy it's easiest to show the slow units just because i actually have time to click on another unit so i can click anywhere oh look at it's finding the shortest path okay but um yeah and obviously, if I'm if I'm doing that in order to make it work so that it makes sense, in order to make it so that the events can actually complete their unit path, I just go on ahead and set all of the events on passability to through while they're moving. In case you were wondering why why um, events were passing through each other, that's why because their passability is being set to through while they're moving because I'm allowing um events to move while other events are moving. I'm probably actually going to take this functionality out in the main script because it is a little bit buggy now. I don't think I'm going to be able to generate the bug that happens, but sometimes when you... I don't, I don't actually know why this happens, but sometimes when you click right below a unit, and you have to do it fast, you have to like click on a unit, then click right below it while another unit is moving, and the event will sometimes just jump. You know, you'll, you're, you're essentially specifying a coordinate that's off the map. It has to do with... I'm pretty sure it has to do with um, the map, the um, display you know, the X and Y of the map changing at the same time that you're clicking. But uh, anyways, so, uh, yeah, so another thing about the script is that is the um, jump lengths and passabilities. So it's gonna, he's going to be able to pass through that unit because that unit was moving when his his own, his moving path was being generated. But anyways, um, about the uh, move jump lengths, this, uh, this unit right here, this like kind of cool looking knight, I pulled this off of some website somewhere. He has a jump length of two. So he's going to be able to jump over um, water, even if there's two, more than one water tile in a row. So we'll see that as he, as I tell him to move right here, he just jumps right over this location. The soldier can't do that. So if we look at a soldier and we tell him, and we, and we want him to do the same thing, he's going to actually have to take the bridge because he's really lame. So yeah, he, he only has a jump length of one. But for example, he would be able to uh, let's get a little closer. He's going to be able to, for example, jump over the rock and everything. Okay, so another thing is the passability option. This blue knight is set to be able to pass through the, these poison terrains. Meanwhile, a normal skeleton or something would not be able to, or a normal soldier would not be able to. I think that's most of the features right now. There are a few quirky things if you don't specify, if, if you specify four directional passability a bit oddly. And I can actually show that right here. So, for example, if I'm on this bridge, this bridge is set to have four directional passability such that it can only be entered from, a, from the left or right. You can't move on it from above and below. So, you would expect the knight to be able to just jump right over here, but be, because of, I implemented jump such that you cannot jump off of a tile in which the directional passability for the direction that you're trying to jump off of in, it in is blocked, the knight's actually going to walk around. Um, that's something I'm going to leave in because if I were to fix that, there would be other there would be other things that happened that were unintuitive and I know one of the things is that you would be able to jump onto cliffs if there was something blocking right here so for example you would be able to jump onto this cliff if there was a, a rock right here but you wouldn't be able to jump onto the cliff if there wasn't a rock right there so it's one of those things where you're gonna have to design your map to um, your map correctly 
to get the most intuitive effect. I actually took out the four directional pass ability, I mean the um, the two block pass abilities on this bridge. So you'll get the intuitive effect on this bridge. The knight will actually go to jump directly over here. Like that. <laughs> so it just has to do with how you're designing your map. <laughs> um, I think that's most of it. I'm pretty excited, you know, I finally got, I finally got into fast, finally got into working, after 80 hours of work, it took a very long time, and it looks like I am going to be able to move on to some other portions of the script now, I think I'm going to do skills next, so I will post an update when I, uh, when I get there, I'll see you later.